So we have a few questions about the palette setup again, so I just want to make a quick little demo video in case any of you need it. Um, I've got a couple paper towels here and a Tupperware container that has a top that closes. Um, you can buy things called Stay Wet palettes that have little pads that go in the bottom of it that you soak and they're very, very nice. But um, I go through them too fast. I'm a bit of a mess and I like having multiple palettes. I can put multiple different like color swatches in, carries around well. So the point of doing a Stay Wet palette is that it helps you not have your paints dry out as much as quickly. So uh, with the paper towels, I'm just gonna cut uh, some of them. You can fold them up to the right size. This way, and then I don't need that tail on the side. You don't need a whole bunch of paper towels, it just needs to be enough to hold some water in it. So those are gonna fit. Um, I have my water jar. Go ahead and soak them. They don't have to be like dripping, they just need to be wet. So now those are wet, you can go ahead and put them in there. Uh, if you have palette pages or wax paper, that works really, really well. I did it with parchment paper last time we did this, so this time I'm going to do it the even kind of sillier way and do it with a little bit of saran wrap. So anything that's going to be a little waterproof but keep your paints can kind of schmear around on. So another question that comes up is how to lay out some of your paints in your palette. You might have come across a way you like to do them in watercolor. Um, I do know that when mixing with acrylics, we tend to use up a little bit more space, make a little bit of a more messy equation. So I like to put my colors together in a way that they're not going to run together and create black. Um, so I might put, you know, yellow and then green and then blue and, and keep these things together, but I wouldn't put like yellow right next to purple on my palette. I tend to line them up on one side, so there's like a side I'm pulling from and then a section I can mix in. If I'm using colors that are similar, like maybe two different yellows, I like to have those next to each other. You've seen this a bit in my acrylics, or in my watercolors. Um, so if I'm gonna pull out a bunch of different neutral colors, I'm gonna mat put those along the other side. So that way you sort of have the middle area for dabbing out of. I often put a little bit of white in the middle too because I'm gonna pull that for lots of different colors. So the white's going to get dirty quickly. So sometimes I do like a couple different ones if I know I'm gonna pull for two different tone worlds. It's red. But that way I've kind of got stuff that's not going to mix to a color I would never want. Um, so I do like to have a little bit of a blue and a purple for today's demo. Let's use this Payne's Gray. Now I'm only putting just a little bit down. You know, you can always put down more paint. If you are a person who's a very messy blender, you might want to do um, different little Tupperwares for different color blends. So you might have like a blues and greens Tupperware. You might have a... Now for this one, I'm more likely to use that blue with this red to create some purples. If you've been in class with me before, you know I love a purple shadow. So I put a little bit of this purple mixture over here knowing that I'm going to use those together so why would I put them really far apart on my palette. So that leaves me a lot of mixing room in the middle. Having the whites over here means that I can pull out and dab it into any of those without like getting too crowded next to my other colors. Um, that's just one way to do it. You can also, if you're a person who would prefer to work in palettes that have wells in them, this one's really shallow because it's one of my watercolor ones, uh, you can always work in this and then just drop it inside of a Tupperware that has water soaked uh, paper towels on the bottom and it should do the same thing. But I kind of like this because I can throw out the palette pad if it becomes too much of a mess. But that is one way to set up your palette. I hope that that helps everyone a little bit and be doing some texture demos next.